start off with running in place. Just keep your feet moving, keep your hands up. Shuffle to one side, jab cross, and then the other side. Knees. That's recording. Keep your standing knee bent. Other side. Ladder steps. Kicks, front side back. Make sure you take turn your standing foot on the side kick. Okay. Two times more through that set. Running in place, punches, jab, cross, hook, uppercut. Shuffle side to side with jab, cross, knees, ladder steps, and kicks. Two times more through, and then when you come back to me, we'll stretch. You reach up. And straight out to the front. for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Down in the side stretch. Both heels on the floor. If you need more stretch, take this elbow, push the knee further out. Turn. Make sure your foot is extended past your knee. Stretch your hip flexor, which is this. Straighten out your legs. Point your toes in the same direction. Knee straight, chin up, back flat. Stretch your hamstring. Come to the center, toes straight forward, push your knees up. Other side, grab your ankle. Down in the side stretch.
turn, start your hip flexor. Straighten up your legs. Stretch your hamstring. <coughs> Have a seat, feet out, reach over to one side, grab your toes, reach over the top, keep your butt on the floor. Other side. And down to the center. Keep your toes up, keep your chin up, reach your elbows toward the floor. Pull your feet in, heels on the floor, rock back and forth. If you need a little bit more, put your elbows inside your knees, push them out. And then put your hands down and straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, so we're gonna do three ex three different exercises. You're I'm gonna show you each one one time through, and then after you've done them with me once through, you're gonna do them two more times. So the first one is legs here, feet are apart, toes are out at 45 degrees. Squat down. Keep your body where it is. Lift your heels up as high as they'll come, heels down and back up. Okay, that's the first one. Second one is dips. So you're gonna start here. If you can put your hands flat on the floor, um, your fingers should be facing your toes. Your elbows need to be straight. So I gotta get my hands off the floor because my elbows don't go straight. So what you can do is you're gonna dip. I'm bending my elbows. I'm not just dropping my butt, I bend my elbows, I kick, bend, kick. And then the last one that we're going to do, on your back, hands, make a diamond under your tailbone. Keep your chin tucked, so don't put your head on the floor behind you, and you're doing scissors. Okay, so two more times through each one of those. Squats, toes, dips with kicks, and scissors. Okay, it's the first month of the new cycle. 
and we're going to go back to some basics, stuff that's in the curriculum this cycle, but not the forms and the self-defenses themselves yet, but the basics that make them up. So we're going to start with some kicks. We're going to start with the side kick. I want you to get your chair. I know you're going, I, I can do this without a chair. I know that, but if you have the chair, then you're focusing on the details rather than on the balance. So right now I want you to put your chair there. Take your standing foot, turn your, I'm going to turn this up so maybe you can see my standing foot. Maybe not. I'm not sure how much space I have here. But you're going to turn your standing foot away from the target. So my target's there, standing foot's turned that way. I'm going to bring my foot up as if I'm putting it on a step in front of me. I'm going to turn my hip and butt towards the target, my heels towards the target, and my toes are pointed down. They're not pointed up, they're pointed down. And I push in and down. So we're going to do five on that leg. One, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to switch sides. Make sure the standing foot is facing away from the target. Target's there. Knee is up. Turn. So my heel, my knee, my hip are about the same height. My, I'm leaving with my heel, my toes pointed down. I kick out, so I'm pushing and hitting the target with my heel. The rest of my foot is pulled back and out of the way. So let's do five. One, two, three, four, Five. Okay, then what I want you to do is put a target there. Okay, so you can use your chair as your target. I'm just going to make the back of the chair my target. And I want to hit it only with the bottom of my heel. So I'm going to go one. I'm not going to hit hard enough to make anything go flying across the kitchen. Two. Three. Four, five, and then five on the other side. I'll use the stove for the target for that one. Two, three, four, five. Okay, then you're going to get to pull your chair back out, and we're going to do hook kicks. The hook kick. Most of the kicks that we do, we say four-point kicks. You have chamber, kick, re-chamber, leg. So if I'm doing a round husking, I'm doing a four-point kick. Chamber, kick, re-chamber, land. When I do a side kick, it's kind of got five points. I have the chamber, turn my hip, which is the second part of the chamber, kick, re-chamber, land. So that's five parts. One, two, three, four, five. When I do a hook kick, in Tangshida, we call it yep. Hurryo Chaki. So if we actually spoke Korean, we probably wouldn't pronounce it like that. But it means side hook kick. So what you're actually doing is you throw on your side kick. You miss with the side kick. So I'm throwing your side kick. I'm trying to hit something with this part of my foot. But it's back here, so I missed. And then I drag my hip back and I hit it with the back of my heel. So this kick actually has five parts. This is not the hook. That's a rechamber. The hook comes from your hip. So I'm going to chamber, just like I did with my side kick, turn my hip, my heel towards the target, my knee's going to be up the same height, throw the side kick, hook, pull it in, and drop it. So we're going to do five of those. One, two, three, four, And then on the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then I want you to find somebody that you can practice with. 
that will help you practice. And they're going to offer you targets. So they're going to hold their hand out like this, and you're going to throw side kicks and hit with the bottom of your heel. You're going to do 10 on each foot. They're going to move the heights around and move their hand around. So you have to move around a little bit. You might have to move here and then back up and kick higher and come forward and kick center. And from the same place, kick lower and kick higher, but 10 on each leg. And then I want you to do 10 hook kicks on each leg. And when they hold for the hook kicks, they're going to put one hand here and one like this. And you're going to aim your side kick for their hand. But it's going to be too far away and you're going to miss. And you're going to drag your heel. So you're going to miss this one and drag your heel back and kick the other one. So I want 10 of those on each leg too. And then it's a courtesy to also do it for your partner. If they don't take karate, that's okay. Go over the kicks with them because the best way for you to learn them is to teach them to someone else. Okay, new cycle, new forms. And everybody's like, yeah, I want to know the form. Hurry up and teach me the form. That's not how it works. Okay, the form is a stylized way <clears throat> to practice self-defenses. So if you can't do the moves properly, understanding where you're generating the power from, where the rotation comes from, what the target is, what part of your body is hitting the target, they're not gonna work as self-defenses. So we're gonna break down um, a bunch of techniques from all of the forms this cycle. And then as we start learning the form, I'll be able to see, see, this is what we practice, and you're just gonna throw it in here, and that's how it works as a self-defense. So we're gonna start with our very basics. Jungle Chassi. Okay, some of you guys have heard me say this before. People will tell you when you do triple toss, you start with your feet shoulder width apart. It's got nothing to do with how wide your shoulders are. It's got to do with how long your legs are and how flexible your legs are. Okay, I have really long legs and I have very flexible hamstrings. So my stance is really big. Okay, however, I am flexible enough to have a stance down here, but the problem with this is if my stance is way down here, then to get out to attack somebody, is a long way to go and it makes me really slow. So you gotta find a balance between that. So what you want here is you want your feet comfortably apart so that I'm planted. Then you're gonna take your right foot and you're gonna drag it straight back. You want the distance from here to here to be the same as the distance from here to here. You want your front knee to be bent. You want your back knee to be straight. You want your toes all facing in the same direction. You want your hips square here and your shoulders square. So you don't want to be off at an angle like this. Everything needs to be square. You're going to tr if you're finding that as you do this, your back heels off the floor, that means your stance is too big for how flexible your legs are. Make it smaller, stretch, do the stretching exercises that are in the warmups and eventually your, your stance will get long enough to fit your, to fit your legs. Okay, so we're going to start here, we're going to go forward. My head stays at the same height, I'm not going up and down. Head stays at the same height, I come forward, one foot touches the other, and then slides back out to Chungle Chassis. So a really good way to practice this is to go out in your driveway with a piece of sidewalk chalk. Put your feet about like this, and draw two lines, and put your feet in stance on the line and travel forward and back. Okay, then we're going to add a punch. So find your ribs, follow them up to where they meet. That's your solar plexus. That's your target. People tend to want to put it up here. You want to hit someone right in the solar plexus in the spot that's going to knock the wind out of them. It's not out here. It's not here. It's way down here. Back hand is tucked. I step, and as I settle my stance, I rotate the hand. The other one's pulled back. Okay, what tends to happen when we do this, too, is people do this. They come here, they throw the punch, and they have the punching shoulder extended way forward. Pull it back. Pull the other one forward so they're square. Coming forward and going back. Okay, and then we're also going to do something similar to that, 
We're going to start in a soaker or chassis, which is a toes out horse stance. Okay? You're not here. Your shoulders have to be over your hips and your knees are bent. I'm punching slightly uphill. So if I was standing up straight, my punch would be straight across. Now leave my hand where it is. As I drop my hips, my shoulders are going to come down too, but my hand is going to stay where it was. I'm going to leave my hand there and turn my toes in the direction I'm going. Without making my head any taller, the back foot drags through. All my toes are facing that direction. My hand is facing that direction. I rotate and punch. Okay, then going the other way, turn, step through, punch. Turn, step through, punch. And we come back. And the other way. Okay, so go back and forth so you've done 10 of those. Okay, so we did drill in shingle chassis front stance. We did drill in soaker or chassis, toes out horse stance. Okay, we're gonna do a drill in with two different cat stances. Okay, the regular Korean cat stance we do. Okay, there's lines on the floor, but you can see them. I have my heels on the lines. I'm gonna take this foot and I'm gonna turn it so my toes are facing that way. If I pulled that one in, my heels would be lined up. What tends to happen when you do this is you push that toe out and you turn your hips this way. Force them back like this. Then I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is get my head out of the way. Something's coming at me from that way. I don't wanna get my head out of the way this way, but watch where my head goes. When I bend this knee, I'm still in a straight line here, but my body's moved out of the way. 30% of my weight here, 70% of it here. I'm not way up here. If you can get your, in this angle with your hips forward, if you can get your heel up this high, your stance is much too short for how flexible your legs are. It needs to be out here. Okay, this is a regular Korean cat stance. We call it hubu chasi. I'm sure if you speak Korean, that's not what it sounds like, but that's what we call it. Then I'm gonna to turn to a Japanese cat stance. Now I'm gonna do the Korean cat stance. I got 70% of my weight here, 30 here. My hips and shoulders are facing that way. When I do the Japanese cat stance, I'm gonna turn my chest that way. I want to pull 90% of my weight onto this foot. Okay, if I lean 90% of the weight on this foot and keep that foot where it is, it's going to force me to lean back. So to keep 90% of my weight here, I'm going to pull this foot in closer. So now in this case, the heel's way off the floor. Here it's pretty close, 70-30, hips and shoulders are that way. Turn here, 90-10, hips and shoulders facing that way. So we're going to go back and forth. One and back to here. Two. Okay, facing the other way, the other way. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten. Okay, so I want you to practice those so you can feel the difference. Not, and then push yourself in front of the mirror and do it so that you can see the difference. And then what we're going to do is we're going to practice stance called the close kneel. So I'm going to actually angle my camera down a little bit more for this so you can see my feet better. Okay, so when I do a close kneel, I start here in a horse stance. I turn this foot and I drop my knee so it's almost touching the floor. I think ideally that toe would be facing forward, but that doesn't leave me very balanced, so I tend to leave it at 45, so it gives me a little bit more balance. Back to toes forward or in horse stance. Close knee on the other side and back. So we'll go one, two, three, four, Five. Okay, then what we're going to do here is you're going to, in this toes forward horse stance, you're going to throw a punch. Then the hand that punches is going to chamber on the outside and you're going to rotate your hips and block. Then the other hand, toes in punch, chamber on the outside, rotate your hips and block. This is called counter torque. 
I'll do it this way. If you've not done this before, it's an odd, it's an odd thought. Okay, so you're gonna go punch, chamber, block. Punch, chamber, block. Punch, chamber, block. Punch, chamber, block. Okay, if that's not making sense to your brain, stop the video, rewind a little bit. And once you practice that, till you can do this without thinking about it. Okay, then we're gonna move on to a kick. Okay, you guys all know how to do front kick. Let's just do a few front kicks. Okay, then I'm gonna do some front kicks from a crane stance. Okay, so when I do a front kick, the front of my body has to be facing the target. If the side of my body is facing the target, it's generally a roundhouse kick or side kick. It's not a front kick. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is you're gonna start in a crane stance here, and then you're gonna turn and do your front kick there. Crane stance here, turn, and kick. So from here, what it looks like is crane stance, turn, front kick. Crane stance, turn, front kick. Ideally without putting your foot down. Crane stance, turn, front kick. Crane stance, turn, front kick. And I want you to do a bunch of those. I want you to do it until you can do 10 of them in a row without tipping over. Okay, now we have one more technique or one more set of techniques. Um, Thompson, I was generally considered a hard style. I've been saying for years that the only reason I'm still taking karate 26 years later is that by dumb luck we walked into hard style school because I'm not graceful at all. Chill songs come to us from China. They share a lot of roots with Tai Chi, which has flowy moves. Um, I don't have any flow. Some of the Chill songs have started to grow on me. I've decided I really like Chill Song 5. Second and third degree black belts of cycle doing Chill Song 4. So it's much softer than what we usually do. Normally, if you were going to throw a back fist, you'd be here and you'd throw an elbow here. But what we're doing in this form is we're, th we're using flow in our body to do it. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to throw elbows but we're going to just roll our body. So I'm here and I'm going to throw elbows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then I'm going to throw hammers the same way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then I'm gonna put them together. I'm gonna to throw an elbow and a hammer, and an elbow and a hammer. Because I'm going this way, I may as well use the elbow, and I'm coming back, I may as well hammer. It's called compounding. I tend to think of it that way. But that's not what it does in chill things. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Okay, I want you to practice those until you can. And if you've got a heavy back in the house, that's a really good, um, a really good target for this because you can hit it in one direction and you can hit it coming back. I don't have anything in the house that lends itself to that. If you don't have a, um, a heavy back, okay, get it. If you have a pool noodle, get a kitchen chair like this and take your pool noodle and stand it here so it stands up. So you hit it going across, and you hit it coming back, and you hit it going across, and you hit it coming back. You're gonna hit it coming back with a back fist or a hammer fist, either one. Um, but find something that you can hit back and forth in both directions. Okay, this cycle, beginners and intermediate are doing chucks. For a lot of people, this is their favorite weapon. They think it's the coolest weapon. Um, it's got some practical application, but you can't carry them around unlike the stick. I mean, we do it in a sword form, and you can't carry a sword around, but you can carry a stick around, and a lot of the, the uh, techniques are interchangeable. But we're gonna start here. 
If you hold your chucks down here, I guarantee you at some point you're going to smack yourself in the face. You got to hold them way up here. Okay, and if you're taking class from me, you're going to hear me going a lot of time. Hands closer to the string. Hands closer to the string. Anytime you switch hands, you're going to slide down. And once your hands are down here, you're going to smack yourself in the head. So I want you to put them, you're just going to put it in your right hands now. Okay, so if it was up and down like this, my thumb is going to be at the bottom, so it's here. I'm going to hold it next to me, and I'm just going to do backward spins. So if you're standing here like this next to me, it's backward spins. Then I'm going to put it in the other hand and do the same thing, backward spins. So it's going backwards, backwards, backwards. But it's not my whole shoulder in this. It's just coming, my shoulder and my elbow are pretty steady. The motion is just coming from my wrist. So I'm going back, and the same thing with the other hand. Back. Okay, then I'm going to put it back in the right hand. Thumb right close to the string, and I'm going to go forward. So it's going forward, 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 forward. And just like we did before, the motion is really just coming from my wrist. Then I'm going to put it in the other hand and do the same thing. Okay, then you're going to do it with both. So get your other chuck. If you're a beginner, if you're a white belt or a beginner and you only have one, that's okay. Just keep doing the one hand. The rest of you guys get your other hand and you're going to spin them both back. What you're going to find is my, I'm very right-handed. So my right hand does this really well by itself. I'm very stupid on the left side. My left hand does not do this well at all on its own. When I do them together, the left one does better because it's just following along. Better than when I just have one out there by itself. So you go backwards with two, and then you're going forwards with two. Okay, then put one down again. Now you're going to bring it up to your shoulder. I'm not doing any spins here. I got my feet spread a little bit, so I'm hitting here. I'm not smacking myself in the leg. I'm just using it as a place to turn so it doesn't hurt. I'm just going down and up. Down and up, down and up, down and up, down and up. Then I'm going to do the same thing with my other hand. I'm going to put it in the left hand. Down and up. This side, like from yes, this side is really stupid. Okay, then I'm going to change it up a little bit, make it harder. I'm going to bring it here. And I'm just going to go down and up. So my, I can stop here. So you don't need to have something to hit it on, to turn it. It can hit on your leg. You can hit on the bottom part of your arm. It can just turn in the air. It's just that if you hit something, it's going a little bit faster because it's bouncing off. So I'm bouncing off on the right. In the air on the right and leg on the right. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing on the left. Off your arm. In the air and off your leg. Okay, then get your other one. Like I said, make sure you're holding them close to the strings. You're going to start here. Legs, I mean arms. Then just in the air. And off your legs. Okay, and if you're wondering about the catch at the end, I just came from here, brought it forward and caught. Sometimes it's easier to add an extra turn before you catch. If you come here and you reach, you're not going to catch. All I do is open my hand and let it fall in. So I'm here, I can do it without the extra spin, but the extra spin gives you enough momentum to make it easy. So I just bring it, spin, catch. It's the same spin that we did down here. I'm just doing it off my shoulder. Here, forward, catch. Here, forward, open my hand, let it fall in. Forward, open my hand and let it fall in. If your strings are really long, you're gonna find when you catch, that instead of catching your chucks like this, you're going to be way up here and you're going to be catching string. Ideally, you want to set like this with really short strings or really short chains. If you have long chains, I can't help you. If you have long strings, talk to me and I can possibly, depending on what kind of chucks you have, help you figure out how to make your 
strings shorter. They're much easier to work with. Okay, advanced class and black belts. You guys are doing sword. If you're a black belt, you can use a metal sword. Uh, if you are a gup, you have to use a wooden sword. A wooden sword is called a boken. Um, you can do huge damage to somebody with a boken. Think about hitting somebody with a hard stick, okay? You can't cut them, but it's still a useful weapon. Your, your boken should be a little bit longer than this. This one it was Seth's when he was about seven or eight, and it's a good one to use in the house because there's less length to hit the ceiling fan or the string hanging off it. Okay, so we're gonna start with some basics. I don't have a scabbard on this one, but if you had a scabbard, you would always put it in your sword into your scabbard with the business side up. Reason for that is this is the sharp edge. So if you, when you put it into your scabbard, the weight of the sword is on this edge. Okay, so if you turn it this way, so the sharp side is down. Now, while it's riding around in your scabbard, while you're running across the battlefield or riding your horse across the battlefield, it's the weight is dulling this edge. So it's always in your scabbard or in your belt, business side up. Okay, so it's here. I'm right-handed, I'm gonna do this right hand. I'll show it to you in the other direction too, but I want you to be able to see what my hand is doing. Okay, when I draw it, I'm not gonna put my hand this way. I'm gonna bring it like this so that my thumb is underneath and my fingers are on top. So when I draw, the business end leads. So the business end, the sharp end is leading and I cut across. Because if I grab the other way, I have a sharp end up and I grab here. When I pull it out across, I'm hitting with the dull edge. That's not what I wanna do. I wanna be able to pull it right out and, and attack. So it's here in my belt, sharp side up, thumb is down. The four fingers are on top and you pull it out and across. Okay, when you put it back, you do not want to put a, a sword covered with blood and bone chips and guts back in your scabbard. It's just going to rot in there. So after you cut, you bring it up. You, so you clear it out of whatever you cut. You flick to wipe the most of the blood off. Then you take your hand and you put it against your hip like this. So the thumb is against your body, the four fingers are out, and this is here. You put the not sharp side of the sword here. If you put the sharp side, you're gonna cut right through your hand. Okay, so you put your hand here, you put the sword here, you squeeze, you wipe the blood off. And then you tuck it back into the scabbard, sharp side up, okay? This is gonna seem really silly, but it's a good memory pack. So I start here, I attack, here, and then I bring it up, ha, I beat you, okay? We're gonna wipe, switch, uh, flick off the blood, swish, I'm gonna wipe the blood, and I'm gonna put it back in my belt, click. Okay, good memory peg. Here, ha, swish, click, here, Ha, swish, click. I want you to do that 10 times. Okay, if you have a burning desire to do it on the left side, if you're left-handed, go ahead. Uh, the, the forms are right-handed, so you're gonna have to be able to do it on the right hand anyway. Okay, then we're gonna talk about blocking and striking. Okay, when I block, I say block the head. A lot of you guys do this. This is not a useful block for your head. Your head is not blocked, okay? If you block like this, with the tsuba down, that's what this thing is called. I don't know. It's spelled T-S-U-B-A. It's a tsuba, it's the guard. Okay, so if I block like this with the guard down and the other person's sword or ax or tire iron hits here and slides down, there's a good chance it's gonna come right over the top and take my hand. So I wanna block this way. So I'm gonna start here, just in this regular stance, bring my sword up and block and bring it back down and up and block. So we do that 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then we're gonna cut. So I'm gonna bring my sword up and I'm gonna block and then I'm gonna cut across shoulder to hip. One, two, three, Four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I'll do it the other way in case it's easier for you to follow. Block and cut. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I want you to practice those and then I want you to add a step. So I'm going to start here with my sword on, in the scabbard. I'm going to step out and cut and block and step and strike. And then ha, swish, click. And then again, start here. Step out, cut across. Block, step and cut. Ha, swish, click. Okay, I want you to do that 10 times. 